the houses were specifically designed to reduce carbon emissions. Uh, they were designed as a, a low energy, low carbon emission house. And the whole project excited me, um, mainly because of the, the eco um, side of the development. We just liked the concept uh, and gradually got more and more involved and uh, it was the obvious thing to do was to actually live in one of the houses. You have to start from the premise that you need to be able to sell the houses. So although we were building an uncompromisingly modern build, which is low energy and low carbon, the, the building societies have to be prepared to lend on them. So we decided quite simply that we would go for well-tried traditional materials. We were trying to achieve the best we could without too much increase in the cost, the build cost, and therefore in the cost the purchaser would incur. The £2.5 million Fairglen Eco Community is in Hale, Cornwall, a part of England well known for its mild climate and sunshine. The development is on a disused nursery site, which was in an excellent position near to shops, transport and the local beach. Access was restricted to one end, with the site running along a south-facing slope. This was perfectly suited for two east-west terraces that would be a combination of both private houses and housing association units. We did look at several options for heating the properties and ground source heat pumps are by no means the cheapest. But in these days of throwaway boilers, something that offers a probable life of about 30 years is very attractive and maintenance is absolutely minimal on them. Ground source heat pumps pump heat out of the ground using a closed loop pipe concealed within a borehole under each house. As the water travels around the pipe, it absorbs heat from the ground, which is then upgraded to around 50 degrees Celsius and used for underfloor heating. By combining ground source heat pumps with conventional concrete block, the houses in Fairglen have a high thermal mass, which provides an extremely stable temperature all year round. Uh, you don't go switching ground source heat pumps on and off depending on whether it's a sunny day or a cold day. You leave them on constantly and so the whole house remains amazingly stable. In the last year the temperature has not deviated by more than one degree centigrade up or down. The heat pumps on all the time so you come in in the evening it's just, just the right temperature. It really is the heart of the house. I once owned a, a, an old Victorian house in St Ives and it had an arger in, in, in the kitchen. That was like, it's almost like an arger in a way. The whole house seems to work so smoothly, this constant temperature. There's no business of, oh, have you switched the heating on this morning? Everything works absolutely splendidly. The homes benefit from the passive design. Huge southeast windows capture the warmth of any sunshine and provide plenty of natural light. Whereas the underfloor heating does away with the need for radiators, leaving uninterrupted wall space, which makes each room spaciously stylish. We designed them with a certain amount of thermal mass because we felt that was key to retaining the heat. We wanted to build a very highly insulated skin, so as it is relatively airtight. When you seal up a house and, and insulate it very highly, you start developing problems with stale air and moisture. So we've introduced a heat exchange ventilation system, which overcomes that problem. These ventilation units supply fresh air to the house while extracting damp or stale air from areas such as bathrooms or kitchens. The incoming fresh air is slightly preheated by the heat exchanger, so doesn't result in cold drafts. These homes really work as a system, retaining their heat, yet keeping a constant flow of fresh air throughout. The figures suggest that they are producing something like 70% less carbon emissions than you would have with a standard building regs house. Our total energy bills, our heating, our power, our cooking, is under 500 pounds a year. Bills for the month of June this year, for instance, was under 20 pounds. 
We have some photovoltaic cells and they are producing probably something like 25% of the electricity that we use. The last two quarters, just for an example, uh, the electricity bill cost me about £45 a quarter. As built, the building's carbon emissions are predicted to be 63% better than the standard required by current building regulations. Carbon Trust has been a huge help to us. Their knowledge has is, is been absolutely invaluable in this project. Our design is probably far better worked up than it would have been without them. Phase one of the development, we've learnt quite a bit. There's not a lot in essence that we're going to change. Phase two, we think we will be building only three bedroom houses. We're slightly changing the layout, but essentially we found this layout works extremely well. I think the houses have got an inbuilt quality and value that will be appreciated a bit further in maybe you know, three to five years' time. Years to come, when estate agents' literature has to have the ratings of particular houses, people are going to start comparing and they're going to look at two houses and they're going to say, well, you know, that one's much, much better. That, that's an A-rated energy house. That one's an E-rated. What are you going to do? Obviously, you're going to go for the A-rated. Yeah. <laughs>